So you've had an interaction and perhaps a bit of a friendship with Stephen Hawking. Uh, does it make you sad that he didn't win the Nobel? Well, altogether, I don't assign uh, great uh, importance to prizes yes. because, uh, as you said, you know, Jean Paul Sartre, who I admired as a, a teenager because I was interested in philosophy when I grew up on a farm in Israel. Uh, you know, I used to collect eggs every afternoon and I would drive the tractor to the hills of our village and just think about philosophy, read philosophy books. And Jean Paul Sartre was one of my favorite. And he was honored with the Nobel Prize in Literature. He was a philosopher primarily, existentialist. And he said, the hell with it. You know, why should I give um, special attention to this committee of people that get their self-importance from awarding me the prize? Like yes. what, what's, uh, you know, why, why does that merit my attention? Yes. So he, he gave up on the Nobel Prize. And, you know, there are two benefits to that. One, that you don't, you're not, working your entire life in the direction that would satisfy the will of other people. Mm -hmm. You know, the, you, you work independently, you, you're not after these honors. Just yeah. for the same reason that you're, if you're not living your life for making a profit or money, you can me live a more fulfilling life because you're not being swayed by the wind, yes. you know, of how to make money and so forth. Uh, the, the second aspect of it is, you know, that um, very often, um, you know, these prizes, um, they, um, they they distort the way we do science because instead of um, people willing to take risks and instead of having uh, announcements only after a group of people converges with a definite result, you know, uh, the natural progression of science is based on trial and error, you know, so reporting some results and perhaps they're wrong, but then other people find perhaps better evidence and then you figure out what's going on. And that's the natural way that science is, you know, it's a learning experience. Yeah. So if you give the public an image by which scientists are always right, you know, and, and, and you know, some of my colleagues say we must do that because otherwise the public will never believe us that global yeah. warming is really taking place. Right. But that's not true because the public will really believe you if you show the evidence. Yes. So the point is you should be sincere when the evidence is not absolutely clear or where there are disputes about the interpretation of the evidence, we should show ourselves. Yes. You know, the king is naked, okay? There is no point in pretending that the king is dressed, yes. saying that scientists are always right. Scientists are wrong yes. frequently yes. and the only way to make progress is by evidence, giving us the support that we need to make airtight arguments. So when you say global warming is taking place, if the evidence is fully supportive, if there are no holes in the argument, mm -hmm. then people will be convinced because you're not trying to fool them. When the evidence was not complete, you also show them that the evidence is not complete. Yeah, and when so, there's holes, you show that there's holes and here's the methodology we're using to try to close those holes. Exactly, let's be sincere, why yeah. pretend? So if there were no, in a world where there were, there were no prizes, no honors, yeah. we would act like kids, as I said before. <laughs> we would really be focusing on the ball and not on the audience. Yeah, the prizes get in the way and it's, it's so powerful. It,